Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of the Most Sport Live Show. A little bit later than planned I have to admit, so apologies for that. But we are going to get straight into it. So I hope you have enjoyed a fantastic sun-filled weekend of motorsport and there has been a lot on. There has been everything from MotoGP to Formula E, uh, IMSA, Formula 3, um, what else have we got? Um, DTM at Zandvoort. Some really great racing but there really was only one pinnacle of motorsport this weekend and it was of course the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Now this really is one of my favourite events of the year and I was truly gutted that I couldn't go. I've been uh, numerous times in previous years and it is amazing and it would have been so good in uh, the weather so well done to you and lucky you if you did manage to go let me know how it was down in the comments below but um, yeah that really was the pinnacle because nowhere else in the world um, do you get the coming together of so many different types of motorsport in one place. You've obviously got historics, you've got concept cars, you've got prototypes, you've got four wheels, you've got two wheels, you've got side cars, you've got everything. You've even got the robo car, robo race, robo race I think it is. Um, so there was a car that went up there without a driver in it. Crazy. Um, which we might do, do a, um, an episode on in the future because uh, I think it's a very interesting subject. Um, but Goodwood Festival Speed is kind of um, the main thing that we we're going to talk about uh, or having watched Goodwood kind of made me think about something and the, the discussion that we're going to have is about two wheels versus four wheels and everything in between. Now I know a lot of people will uh, only watch Formula One or they will only watch bikes, you know, super bikes and MotoGP. There'll be some people who are only interested in club racing and think that, you know, motorsport that's in the mainstream media is far too corporate for them and they're, they're sellouts and, you know, it's lost the core kind of purpose of motorsport, which is, you know, the competitive edge and it doesn't really matter the machines that you're in. So what we're going to try and do is kind of dissect why people might choose two wheels versus four wheels and why people don't just like all motorsport because hey, I love all motorsport and kind of starting this channel up and this kind of project has even still, you know, opened my eyes to so much more different motorsport and what's out there and, and kind of with the new media streams as I've said before, there's so much more out there than there ever has been. and. I just think that we need to get it more out there. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. So anyway, let's go into this and kind of see where we get to. So as we all know, we're told that the pinnacle of most sport is Formula One. And I guess in terms of money and speed, it is. There's no faster race series. Yes, the Porsche 919 Evo has gone faster and Spa and the Norge Life. But in terms of race series, there is nothing quicker and I guess that is its unique selling point. You can't go any faster around a track in a race series than these cars. Now, obviously that is then backed up by all the money that's pumped into it through sponsorship and television rights and all of that, which then, you know, get exposure across all the mainstream media. So, you know, Formula One results make it into the news or if Silverstone is threatening to uh, quit the Grand Prix or whatever, or F1's threatening to drop Silverstone or anything like that, it makes it into mainstream news. Whereas anything else really doesn't make it into the news. Now, I'm obviously going to be biased towards the English and the British market because that's where I'm based and obviously I don't get to experience what it's like in America or across Europe. Um, but Formula One is kind of it. And I guess there will be certain people who take a small bit of interest in it because they, they see it, you know. They go, oh, I know Lewis Hamilton because I got told that he's won loads of races and he's won the championship. So I guess that's kind of the lowest form of interest in motorsport you'll get. You have people who are uninterested in all and would even know Lewis Hamilton's name, but you'll get people who are like, oh yeah, Lewis Hamilton, he won the championship three or four times, hasn't he? You know, still have that basic understanding. So what I'm really looking at is kind of the next level up, people who are interested in Formula One, but aren't interested in anything else. So I certainly started off by uh, seeing Formula One, and that's the exposure side of it. When I was younger, it was on mainstream TV. It's now disappearing behind a paywall, which is very depressing. Um, and maybe we'll come onto that in a bit, but that was what I saw and kind of like, I love this, you know. I, saw, I remember, I think my earliest memory was Schumacher firing Damon Hill off at Adelaide. He did fire him off, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't Damon Hill. <laughs> I was a Damon Hill fan, okay. Um, 
And I, that's what, that's the first thing I remember. But when I was eight, I got taken to an indoor kart track and I was like, oh right, there's not just F1 out there. There's loads of different things out there. And that kind of then built up as I started playing computer games. Um, and certainly the biggest change for me was when a game called GTR came out, which was a simulator. Um, and it was based on the FIA GT Championship, so it had like the Maserati MC12, the Ferrari 550s, you know, these really cool, powerful, loud cars. And I was like, wow, this is this is awesome. And I've seen things like Rallycross on Grandstand and things like that. So I guess that's that's where it starts. But then I realised, oh, there's motorbikes as well. They're they're amazing too. And the racing in motorbikes is arguably better in cars because they're smaller. They need bigger, bigger. Bleh bigger braking distances because um, they don't have the downforce and they only have, well, when they're braking, basically one wheel slowing them down. They've only got the friction from the front tyre slowing them down. So they need l much bigger braking distances which induces overtaking, which then makes it more entertaining. And people who watch that and are diehard motorsport, uh, motorbike fans, motorbike racing fans, they will, you know, argue rightly so, that these people, you know, they've got bigger balls, you know, they are proper heroes, you know, they're warriors, they're manhandling these machines, it's far more dangerous than if you're in a roll cage or in a safety cell, and all these arguments are true. I, you know, you can't deny that, and I like MotoGP, I like watching World Superbikes, I've been to British Superbikes on numerous occasions, I've seen Supermoto at Silverstone, and was very impressed, and I, you know, I like all of it, but I still have to say that I probably prefer four wheels, and I guess that's probably because of what I've been brought up on. And one of the main things that I wanted to kind of talk about here was motorbikes is a lot easier to relate to because, um, and we're talking again at the top level here of MotoGP versus Formula One, because MotoGP, they're still riding a motorbike around the track. So anybody who's ridden any form of motorbike can relate to it. They're like, Wow, when I go around a corner, my elbow or my knees nowhere near the ground. How do they get those angles? That's insane. And you know, going 200 miles an hour, people will know that going you know 80, 90 miles an hour, <coughs> sorry, officer, um, feels quick. So these people are doing 180, 190, 200 miles an hour down the straight. Then they get up to like 210 at Mizano in MotoGP. So they can understand that and be like, wow, that's amazing. Whereas Formula One and four wheel driving has this almost stigma attached to, to people who don't understand motorsport that oh they just sit down don't they and pull some levers and press some buttons and you know do this with their feet and it's so annoying that it's like yeah but formula one they have like 5g um you know push down on them when they're braking you know they have two three four g when they go around the corners they have to have unbelievably strong necks but you just you don't get that because you look at a formula one car it's nothing like a road car that you would drive and you know they're highly trained athletes so when they get out of the car and certainly in this day and age when they're driving around you know anywhere from like three to seven seconds off the pole position pace in a race they get out of the car and they look fine and you're like well they can't have been, can't have been that difficult because they've been managing tires and fuel and i do think that is one of the main problems with formula one at the moment so then you say well surely you know british touring cars on the new tcr series is far more relevant because it's BMWs, it's Volkswagens, it's Seat, you know, it's Alfa Romeos, it's Hondas, it's Toyotas, it's whatever, you know, they are purely relatable cars, they're what you drive on the street. And, but then, that also then is the problem because people are like, well, I don't break a sweat while driving my car, I've driven my car 80 miles an hour down a motorway, and so they can't appreciate the speed and the skill and, you know, left foot braking and heel and toe technique and, trail breaking into a corner it's not it's not relevant um, unfortunately although some of us do try it but i think that is one of the main things which is why people who like motorbikes tend to stick with motorbikes and also think people who are into cars you know you're normally into cars as well as you're into motorsport you're very rare for some people to be into motorsport but not care about supercars and things like that so i think it's very difficult for people to like both uh, I think you'll always have a preference, and I do. As I said, I normally prefer four wheels, but I do still enjoy watching two as I watch motocross, and I watch the American Supercross series, uh, as I said, and I watch the superbikes. But I think it's an interesting conversation of why people are so die-hard fans of one or the other. 
And I think almost motorbikes is an easier argument to say as to why you would enjoy it more. But four wheels, I kind of think, is the whole cars thing. You like cars, you like driving fast, and then they kind of feed each other. And it, it's it's an interesting thing. But going back to the original point of the Goodwood Festival of Speed, it is exactly that. It's a festival of speed, regardless of whether you like motorbikes um, or cars or whatever it might be, or electric vehicles, they're all there, they're there for you to see, and you can just appreciate, you know, the engineering, the manufacturing, the noise, the smell of it, it's just motorsport, which is what we all love. And I think there needs to be more of it. I think Formula One, certainly, as the people have been saying, needs to be more of a festival feel, and we know, uh, or I posted on, the, uh, on our Twitter page, um, Mark Webber's comments that saying that we don't want to open up access to Formula One drivers too much, and I do get that. They need to be, you know, at this hero status, and they need to be kind of almost unattainable. And I get that because you don't see football players interviewed in the changing room before they go on to the pitch. You don't see uh, Roger Federer being interviewed before he goes onto the tennis court. You know, it's it, interviewing drivers on the grid before a race is strange in sport. It's and you know, people in football fans don't complain that they don't have any access to footballers because they don't. So why don't they complain? You know, it's just because it is the norm. This whole why can't why don't we get to see racing drivers? And it almost does come down to the money a bit that they can't be seen to say anything wrong because otherwise their sponsors will get annoyed. Um, but yeah, Goodwood Festival of Speed. It really is one of the best events, or I'm going to argue and say it's the best motorsport event that you can attend in the UK. It is amazing. It's such an amazing feeling. All the car manufacturers there, they've got amazing stands. Ford, uh, a few years ago, had a slide from the top floor of their stand to the bottom. I think this year they had a jump pad or thing where you jump off a balcony onto a big airbag. I mean, where else are you going to get that? So I really do have to say that that is probably, you know, it is. I'm maintaining that it is the best motorsport event you can go to. If you didn't manage to go this year, do go next year because it is incredible. Okay, so moving on to our final section that we do every week in these episodes, and that is to showcase some amazing online um, motorsport content, because this really is the point of the channel, and the fact that this just isn't done anywhere else is really annoying. We need to be championing these people who've you know, created these amazing bits of content and channels or Facebook pages or YouTube channels we need to be promoting them as best we can because motorsport is awesome and we need to get it out there. So the uh, the main one that we're going to look at today is Race Media TV. So it's Race Dash Media TV. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. I think it's also a website, which but it just links you to the YouTube channel. Now, I discovered this quite a few years ago now because they post uh, a lot of onboard videos from the Nordschleife. So, during the VLN races or the Nürburgring 24 hour races, they have a lot of cameras and they will post like two, three, four hour long videos of these guys racing the GT3s, but also back, you know, in the GT4s and the um, things like Renault Clio Cup cars and the touring cars and things like that, they have onboard cameras and they have these videos on, on the channel. Um, it's a mainly German speaking channel, and um, so when they post highlight videos and things, it is in German, but the subtitles usually and you don't have to watch those. I personally watch it for the onboard videos. When I used to go to the gym, as you can tell I haven't been for a while, I used to watch these onboards, you know, of GT3 cars battling for like 20 minutes, half an hour on the Nordschleife, and then watching them do their driver changes. It's just unbelievable. That circuit is insane. And when you watch onboard videos of them trying to carve their way through traffic, and it just shows how many incidents they have, it's, it's insane. And um, so I, there's hopefully going to have been content being shown on the screen whilst I've been talking about it. And um, go and check it out. It really is an amazing channel. If you like the Nürburgring, if you like GT racing, it's definitely one for you. And you'll get great onboard footage of the drivers. You know, uh, it does review videos. They do um, also lots of other 24 hour series. So like the 24 hours of Bruno, 24 hours of Portimao, one of the best circuits in Europe. And uh, it's just really, really good. And if you like onboard videos, it's certainly for you. So just kind of finish off with a special mention um, to um, another channel that I discovered this week, which uh, again posted on my Twitter page, which you can find a link in the description. 
um, and it's for Nicolo Canapa. Now, some of you might know him, I think he got to MotoGP and World Superbikes, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't get the research too well, I've just realized, um, but I think he now races in Superbikes and he certainly does endurance races like the um, Suzuka and Le Mans endurance races, but I found his channel two days ago and even as a non-bike rider, it kind of blew my mind because it's the first onboard video, somebody riding a, a racing bike on a race circuit that kind of gives you even a glimpse of how difficult it is and the challenges that are involved in the body movement because it's either, I can't even work out where the camera is, it's either on his helmet, but it seems to be right where his visor would be so I don't understand that, or it's like attached to his leathers, it's somewhere because it's on his body. So when he tucks behind the screen, you see him tuck behind the screen, you the tuck behind the screen, then you see him put, pull up for to go into braking, you see him move his body over the side of the bike before tipping it in, you can see how early they get on the power. It's incredible. And again, I'll try and post a link in the description to that because I couldn't believe it, to be honest. And do go and follow me on Twitter. And you'll, when I discover these cool things, um, well, that I think are cool, I will uh, post them on there. And also we're on Instagram as well, Motorsport Life Official. So please do go and follow them and you'll find amazing content like Nicola Canapa's YouTube channel. So that's going to be it for episode two of the Motorsport Life Show. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe on the button below if you uh, did enjoy it because there'll be plenty more of this to come. Um, and check out the links in the description to all the great content that we've been discussing. Um, but for now, that's going to be it. Do carry on enjoying Motorsport. And if there is anything cool or interesting that you want me to look at, then please do comment below or send me, you know, slide into those DMs on Twitter. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.